is Jill Fraley. Welcome to this special edition of the City of Pikeville Economic Development Report. Under the leadership of Mayor Frank Justice and Commissioners Gene Davis, Jimmy Carter, Dallas Lane, and Barry Cheney, the landscape of Pikeville has been forever changed in a very progressive and a very positive way. Development after development has taken place making Pikeville the hub for Eastern Kentucky. Recently, this station hosted a forum of executive staff from the Kentucky League of Cities who stated that out of 380 cities across the state, they represent what they would rank Pikeville as number one as most progressive. Recently, the city has been highlighted as in a statewide publication with the heading, Pikeville's growth is well cultivated. The city received several awards and accolades, making it an example for the rest of the state. Today and tomorrow is no different. There are currently millions of dollars of projects just completed, under construction, or shall soon start within the city's corporate boundaries. The city commission is often stopped on the street asking them about a particular development. They thought it important to use this outlet to inform the public what is going on in our great community. Over the next hour and a half, we will visit and speak to several different developers, highlighting a few projects of importance and of interest. Today, we will cover the Thompson Road retail development known as the Pikeville Commons, the Jenny Wiley Theater Project, the Hilton Garden Inn, the Pikeville Horse Trail, and we'll touch on the new Scholar House. We certainly hope you enjoy today's program. We're now going to talk about something that a lot of people, Donovan Blackburn, are very excited about, and that is the Pikeville Theater. Absolutely. Expansion of Jenny Wiley Theater, really. Well, I mean, I, this is obviously, we're really excited, Jill, because yeah. as the viewers will find out, actually we're seeing for the first time some additions we are. Uh, to this uh, wonderful project. Well, we have a lot to discuss in the next few moments. We're going to welcome in uh, City Commissioner Barry Cheney. Thank you for being with us once again. And Malcolm Holtzman, welcome in from New York City. Thank you very How about much. That? I'm delighted to be here. Well, we're delighted <laughs> to have you. Well, and with that said, Malcolm, or, or Jill, Malcolm is here under duress in a sense because we, we, are, we are filming <laughs> literally about an hour away from the great hurricane hitting yes. his hometown. Sandy. So uh, he's con he obviously is going to be contacting his wife as soon as this is over with. We definitely, Malcolm, wish uh, uh, your family and, and all the other New Yorkers uh, great success riding through this storm, which I'm sure uh, will we'll be okay. We have our fingers crossed. We certainly do. <laughs> well, Malcolm is the principal architect for what we are now calling the Pikeville Theater yes, and is going to be uh, what we anticipate to be a wonderful opportunity for our city, uh, for different companies throughout to come in and put on numerous plays. Now, you are an architect and you have put together, um, and we will see some of those pictures in just a moment, a wonderful facility for us. You are the author of three books. So you are the... the um, most expert opinion on what we can uh, talk about with our Jenny Wall or Pikeville Theater coming up. T talk a little bit about your background first. Oh, my background is very colored. <laughs> 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 I've been uh, uh, making theaters and art centers for about 40 years, mm -hmm. and I've had the pleasure of making them all over the country, from Alaska to Hawaii to Texas. Well, Would now you? you get to do one for our beautiful city of Pikeville. That's right. And actually, I told everybody in Texas yesterday that I was coming to Pikeville. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, what are you going to do there? I said, I'm going to do a very nice small theater. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's very exciting. Well, and we're very blessed to have Malcolm and his partner's uh, expertise, Certainly. Jill. Mm -hmm. Because as Malcolm said, he's being modest, as he always is. But if you look at some of the theater designs that his organization has done, I mean, we're not talking one of our scale because ours is very, a very small, as he just put oh. it, uh, theater in comparison to the multi-million dollar gigantic room, absolutely gorgeous facilities that he has designed all over this country. Mm -hmm. So it's a blessing uh, that uh, we are partnered with such a prestigious company and uh, we're looking forward. I mean, already the work that we're going to be able to show here today is, uh, speaks volumes for itself. It's absolutely beautiful. Malcolm, talk a little bit about um, what we are going to see in our, our small but quaint, very nice theater. Well, you're going to see the beginning of something. Mm -hmm. So we've planned this so that over the years it can grow and expand. Uh, too frequently, art centers never plan for success. And in fact, they become wildly successful and then they realize they're landlocked and they haven't really thought about the future because just getting the first spade in the ground is such an effort, they can't imagine thinking beyond that. So we've done a plan uh, that allows 
the, uh, the theater to grow and expand uh, way beyond where we're beginning. So at, at the outset, we'll have a theater that seats over 200 people. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be able to grow into a theater that seats over 300 people, has a whole coterie of other spaces, lobby, uh, another small presentation, rehearsal space, uh, backstage spaces, lobby spaces, and community spaces. Wow. Our first room, um, because it's the first, will be a flexible space. Um, we want to get the most use out of it. So although it'll have over 200 seats, the seats are adjustable, and therefore they can be retracted, and it can make a very large community room. So it can also be used by the theater for mm, experimental works, but it can also be used by the community for any number of other kinds of programs. And, and the first room you're talking about, Malcolm, is the one that everybody has already seen, the design. Oh, absolutely. So we, we're, we're putting that up right now for people to uh, to kind of view, and that's the original box, not not talking about the old Dollhurst building. It's actually that's the new right. construction, right? It's, it's okay. absolutely new construction. The chain link fence is going up on the site as we speak. <laughs> and the ground banking is going to happen tomorrow. So yes, that's what I'm talking okay. about. Just making sure. Barry, this is something that the commission has been very involved with and eager to see it get started. I know we're going to have our groundbreaking, but talk a little bit about why it's so important from a commission aspect for this to be in with a, within our community. Well, you know, Jill, it, it goes back to people. And, uh, you know, that's what we're all about. It's what's best for the people. And uh, this this project is, has been wonderful. But what people don't realize about theater and the arts, they connect business to the community. Mm -hmm. And when businesses look at a community that has taken uh, uh, the risk or uh, went beyond uh, uh, what they should have done and, and got into the arts, you know, they say, that's where I want to be. I mean, it happens all throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not only does it bring business, uh, connect business to the community, but this will connect a region to the community. You know, there are, there are students out there that, that have dreamed of being in a the theater. Uh, you know, we have singers. I, I've commented on it before that, that sing in our churches that are as good as anybody you hear on TV. And, you know, they have longed for a place such as this to perform. And, uh, you know, what it brings to the community uh, is just unbelievable. And, uh, you know, as I said in a meeting, you know, it's uh, this is not just an opportunity. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And probably for things to come together as they did, uh, you know, it, it's almost like divine intervention because it just, it was, it just fell in place. And you know, even even the, the studying for the, or reading the RFQs for the architect, uh, you run my weekend by the way, brought me a stack <laughs> of stuff and, uh, I said all weekend and Won't be the first read, time. read through those and uh, for the last, for the last. Know, Hosman, Motz, and Matino, they, they stood out head and shoulders above everyone else and then the, the interview on uh, Scott was, you know, they were just fantastic and we knew we had to have them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, is, this is, like I said, the commission is excited about this. This is something we want to to come to pass very quickly. Jill, on, on that same note, I think it's interesting. Barry brings up a lot of very interesting points. But Malcolm, I mean, you've done theater all over the United States. How do you feel like? I'm just curious. How do you think? Our, we've had some of these discussions, but I'd I like to hear from you, from the experts, how well, it impacts our community. Uh, theaters are very interesting. Art, arts projects are. Um, a community only builds one maybe every 25 or 50 years. They're very unusual kinds of projects. Um, but they come to a community and there's then growth all around them. It just sort of happens. And you would think, and I, th I think I've told you before, but even in New York City this happens because a theater will start in a community where there wasn't or in a neighborhood where there wasn't and then the entire neighborhood changes. Um, 30 years ago on 8th Avenue, uh, we took an old movie theater. I remember the theater quite well my feet used to stick to the floor when I went to performances there. I think we've all been in theaters like that. We Over, overused theater from 1940. Um, we totally gutted the theater and rebuilt it for dance. Uh, New York City didn't have a small dance venue. And at first everyone said... It's hard to believe, isn't it? It, it is, it is. Everyone said, in that neighborhood? 
And in that neighborhood today, there are new hotels, <laughs> lots of new restaurants. Mm -hmm. Not that New York doesn't have restaurants, but ones that work with this facility. Uh, the theater has been so successful, they're actually planning a second one. Unbelievable. And wow. today in the newspaper, there was an announcement of a $750,000 grant to fund the programs in it. An independent foundation provided this. So it takes time and it builds, but it builds over time in a community. And um, it, it, it sort of like puts down roots and it sort of fosters other growth as well. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the interesting part of what you see in downtown Pikeville. Jill and you and I have talked about this on our shows Numerous before. Times. And you look at, you know, the Expo Center, and then on top of that, the, uh, the, the Main Street Live with the new stage, and then on top of that, the new restaurants and the new hotels. So, in essence, we've seen a lot of the growth downtown. You know, Malcolm, I've been now city manager for almost nine years. I live beside the city park. And I can remember nine years ago when I took this job, there was very little going on. Matter of fact, Barry, there was nothing going on hardly downtown <laughs> except for a lot of empty buildings. But now what you see is a lot of, of, of growth. And, and the commission about, Barry, I think it was, I can't remember, four or five, six months ago, yes. uh, adopted a resolution naming downtown as an arts and cultural district. And yeah. the tie into the university and the technical college and supporting their performing arts program, you know, this was a natural step. And, and you know, I went, Jill, to, to New York had the opportunity of going up to the top floor and, and uh, somebody who hates heights, as Malcolm realized, I was a little sweaty when I got off the elevator. It was only 17 floors though. <laughs> oh, only 17, yeah. Uh, beautiful view. Uh, but, uh, you know, looking at again uh, what they had, not only th that did we want them because of their unique uh, ability, but also their way of designing because this box, as you will see, not only is about a theater, it's also about taking in components of the city of Pikeville. They took our essence and are trying to bring it to life as part of our overall community. So, uh, you know, the commission and, and the Jenny Wiley Drama Association has been all ears just because we've been very excited of knowing what economic opportunity that this this new facility will bring to, into our community. So I'm real excited. Again, I, I get on, on a little bit of a pedestal, Malcolm, as he knows, but <laughs> I'm, I'm very uh, I've been uh, very blessed to, to be part of this project, and, and uh, this will have a tremendous economic advantage into our community. No well, I, I want to say something else, too. You know, uh, w there's a lot of people who have an opinion of how to be rebuild downtown. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear it all the time. And I've, and I've had some suggestions, some I won't even repeat on the show. But, <laughs> but, you know, to rebuild a downtown, to revitalize a downtown, this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Do it through the arts. And, it, you know, this this is something everybody can be proud of. And when people come into our neighborhood or in their, to our town, this is some place they'll want to go. And this is something, you know, you'll, you'll write a letter to your, your family in North Carolina or New York about, say, hey, we got a, we got a theater here, come and see it. Well, it's just one more opportunity. We've talked about this too, Donovan, where you can actually have foot traffic in a downtown area. You yeah. can park your car, yes. and then yeah. you can walk to our new restaurants. You can walk from the hotel. You now can w will be able to walk to the theater to view all kinds of different artistic programming. And a lot of smaller towns are not having that opportunity anymore, but it seems as though, in the way we have created it, that Pikeville is really becoming an arts, an art, you know, a, a cultural area that people can come to. Well, the the implementation, or say the revitalization of the uh, Artisan Alliance mm -hmm. is a big part of that as well. So we've got a lot of volunteers in the community that is really excited about what's happening with the Bayer Project, with right. with uh, you know the, the different art shows, and the Malcolm, obviously, with your new design here that, uh, mm -hmm. that has not been unveiled. We're so going to get to see that. Let, let's, let's talk about, again, about what, what you're bringing to our great community. Certainly. Um, when I've come, I've always come with a series of options because I know that uh, everyone wants to have a, an opinion about it, discuss yes. it with me, and we, we want to build consensus about wh what we're doing. So in the past, we've come with alternative ways of designing the inside of this new theater that we're making, its outside appearance. But one of the things that we really haven't discussed is what we're going to do to the existing two buildings. Mm -hmm. And there's been discussion of this, but no real illustrations of this. So this is a little premature, because I actually haven't shown this to the Jenny Wiley folks either, but I, <laughs> but I borrowed some of their imagery. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> they won't reprimand me. Good. Um, so we, we, we've taken uh, their logo, uh, and we've done some things with it. We've blown it up in size uh, to cover the area above the entranceways on the two existing buildings. Mm -hmm. And we've done this one way that's uh, extremely graphic. Um, 
I sometimes think black is a very deadly color. So, but we like the contrast of black and white, so we've actually made something that's green and white, where their logo is white and the background is green, and you get the greatest contrast out of it. Mm -hmm. And it just says Jenny Wiley, and below that are a series of new entrance ways into these buildings. Oh, this is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, absolutely. Again, it's something that you normally wouldn't see driving downtown Pikeville that would be used to. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the color of this is absolutely amazing. It is then, beautiful. Then, then there, there's their typical color, and because of the location of where we can put this, we couldn't get the entire logo on, so it's mm -hmm. partially cropped. Right. So, so in this one, this great tree of life, you only begin to see the upper branches. And there's a question if we just use the word Jenny Wiley and the symbol, whether that would be adequate or whether we really need to say Jenny Wiley Theater and whether we need to do it in their full color and whether we need to show the full tree. And then there are a number of different ways to get the graphics on that location. So hopefully we're going to discuss this in the next few days. Mm -hmm. Now, Some of those, they actually, the leaves of the tree actually wrap around the side of the right. building, which I thought was kind of neat. Right. Now, there's another facade uh, on the building. It was never intended to be public. And um, we've suggested that maybe it just shouldn't be on the, on the street side facade, but the one that wraps around it. Okay. So it, in fact, folds the corner. Um, so we've illustrated that. Then there's always the topic of ambition. Mm -hmm. uh, the Jenny Wiley folks have lots of it. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Everybody does, and we all want to spend more money than we have, but, you know, I, I'm in the same boat. So I said, well, we could all also do this, and depending how our, our funding goes and our bidding for the final packages of the work, uh, we've also said that it could also have a, a, a metal facade that would be mm -hmm. uh, similar to the one on the, the structure, the new structure that will contain the theater and a different kind of graphic. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about these uh, tomorrow when we get together and over the next few weeks and then decide which one of these we really want to do and we'll incorporate that into the final bidding documents. I'm curious if you have your favorite. Have to, having been <laughs> You're opening uh, <laughs> <in> words. <laughs> but from someone's perspective who has done numerous and countless buildings and created all of this beauty. Do you have something that you're leaning toward or you think well, would look the best? Well, I like I, I like this one very much. The green and white. I like this one, but I would also imagine it could go around the corner. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then if we actually had the funding, I would also like this one. But if we don't have the funding, this is much more satisfactory than I think yes. uh, you know, uh, I anyone can one. believe. And well, I, I, I well, like this, it. This, this, this says to me you know, that something special is happening here. And I, I really like that. And something special will go on, go on there. And, and it will, on the inside as well. So <laughs> what we see is, of course, you've seen the folks are now seeing the exterior, the new portion of the building, and they're seeing some options on the exterior, because basically the exterior is just a facade, this part is. The interior part of the building, which you have, I see a couple of exhibits, is really where a lot of the, uh, the, the, the work gets done, I guess, Malcolm, is the easiest way to put it. We all like the beauty, but we also need the functionality. Right. Why don't you cover a little bit of the functionality? Great. So I brought some updated plans. Yes. Um, we have been thinking about, one, the functionality of the building, also the economy. Um, as we've worked through this with all of our consultants, we've made a few modest adjustments from our last reviews. One of the things that we've done is, is we've taken the elevator that used to be in the existing building and actually moved it into the new space. It will be much more uh, sensible economically to make it with the new construction makes sense rather Perfect than cutting sense. a hole through the existing structure and then patching around it having it pop up through the roof of that and doing a lot of other things it will also provide access to all of the areas that we need to have access to in the new building as well as the existing one uh, so there have been a little uh, minor other adjustments in here related to uh, providing uh, toilet facilities and their exact location at the first level and the dressing rooms and how the service of the building will work. Mm -hmm. So these are very modest. And then uh, there are a number of technology things we need to discuss as well as related to the lighting and the uh, sound systems that will be in the theater. So where we're at today, and folks can again can kind of get a gist uh, on, on screen of what they're looking at on the interior two uh, exhibits. Uh, you can kind of see from the exterior of what's happening, but right now dirt is moving, right? 
That's correct. The first phase of construction is starting. Okay. Well, and I, I know Jill always has a question regarding, not to put words in your mouth, about <laughs> timelines. I'm trying to beat her to it. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to Jill. <laughs> I do. I always ask our guests, as I've done with every guest that we've had on this particular program, once we break ground, and that's going to be tomorrow, okay, so yeah. we're taping a day prior to that, how long do we think it's going to take from that point to our first show? Um, I would say um, a year uh, a year from the end of this year. A or, year from or, the, end, or, or, the beginning yeah, of 2014. Well, yeah, you know, or maybe in the springtime. It will take everyone a little bit of time to get mm -hmm. used to the building. But, and to this point, the building is scheduled to be completed by the end of December 2013. Right turned over to the Genuine Wild Drama Association, but they've got to have their soft opening. Everything has to work before they right. invite people in. But the great thing about it is it, it's built differently than the existing Genuine Wild Theater because it is an amphitheater. This one will allow so many more opportunities oh, absolutely. than the current facility does. And I know they're anxious and very excited to get within the walls of that building so they can start even more wonderful productions. Well, we are. Well, you know, one of the things, too, Genuine Wild and their, their uh, uh, Sleepy Hollow production mm -hmm. had over 7,000 people attend mm -hmm. that show. So yeah. we're, we're going to see the same thing here. We are. Malcolm, thank you so much for being with us and bringing all the wonderful drawings and the renderings of what we hope that it will look like and explaining a little bit about the ins and outs of this project. It's been a pleasure having you with us. Well, thank you very much. I hope you invite me back when, the, oh, we when will it all invite opens. You back. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I'll be honest with you. When I when we first started talking about the Hilton Garden coming in, and I knew this face that you were going to put it, I thought, how in the world are we they the going to? Everybody's I saying. really <laughs> did because you know I travel down Hanley Boulevard every day, and I look at that space, and right. before it got started, and I thought there is absolutely no way that they're going to be able to do that. And then I thought, what's it going to look like? Well, what I have found with Don is where there is a will, there is a way. <laughs> because he has made things work that I would have told you that there is absolutely no possible way. But but look at the Hampton. I mean, again, I know. it went up. But if you've been in the inside of it, I mean, the inside of it is absolutely magnificent. It's we get gorgeous. compliment after compliment of, of how'd you get something like this in downtown Pikeville. Uh -huh. Uh, but, you know, it took a lot of cooperative effort to get it there, but they did a great job with the design. And as people are looking at on the uh, on their uh, TV right now, at the design, I mean, I mean, look at how it's modeled. It's kind of an L shape. It goes up Elm Street as well. Uh, they used every ounce of space that they got, including the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the alleyway that we once had there. Uh, so, I mean, they've done a, a remarkable job. At, at, and as, you can, as folks can see, this is a top uh, facility. And, of course, that flag name. Uh, says a lot for the it, area. It as helps, well. doesn't it? We, we, we like the Hilton name. We like, we like that. We name. certainly well, do. You know, on top of that, too, Donovan, and, and we've said time and time again for every project, whether it be restaurants, shopping, anything like that, and then with the hotel space as well, is that people don't see us. When they see us on the map, we're 7,000 strong right. in the city, but right. they don't see our service area as being what it is and, and how much it draws. Right. And, uh, and I think that's after, after you put the Hampton in and, and saw the results that got from that. I mean, it's a no brainer to go from this point. Well, it was, and I'm sorry, but it's 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 interesting to say you talk about seven thousand here. It'd be real interesting to know what your daytime population is. Uh, Two hundred and forty-four thousand. Uh, <laughs> uh, you? You've all of a sudden turned into a, a you know a pretty good sized town right. uh, when you look at that. Right, so. and it is it is the hub of every part of our county too. Everybody travels to this area. How many beds are we talking about in in the in the Hilton itself? Uh, in this property, there's 114 rooms, and about 60 of those are kings. So that's 60. Uh, just a little over 200, mm -hmm. a little over 200 so, beds there, and same in the Hampton. We're about 220 there. Okay, so combined, it'll be about 430, 440 on uh, on total beds. Amazing. Yeah. Now the city has been very involved with you in this project. How has it? I will put you on the spot. How's it been to work with this group of guys? <laughs> no, it's that one right there. No, it's really been good. You know, we uh, we started on the Hampton actually probably a little over seven years ago. Actually, our fifth anniversary is coming up in December. We'll have mm -hmm. been open five years. Wow. That, yes. It's hard to believe. Yeah. Really? I think it's December the 14th or somewhere right around in there. I have to go back and look. So anyway, five years. And uh, we were in construction, obviously, for about 20 months. And then uh, we had been working together for probably uh, close to a year before that. So we, Donovan and I, have actually known each other and worked together for seven and a half, eight years, you know, uh, on, on hotel projects. Yeah. So, no, go ahead. Amazing. Uh, Jimmy, why did the city pursue a need for a hotel feasibility study and then a revised study? Well, when we first did our, our, our initial one, you know, with the Expo Center being downtown, mm -hmm. we, we, know, we knew at that point, rather, that we had to have extra, extra space because we were, we were hearing it from different companies in our town, the university, uh, the hospital, people traveling, salespeople and all that, that they needed a place to stay mm -hmm. and they were having to go other places and drive back into Pikeville for their meetings. So with that, you know, we did, did the initial one and then afterwards we've seen now that all this has happened with the Hampton and their occupancy rate is, is high, probably as high as an average you could probably have anywhere in the United States, that we needed something additional because the Expo Center at this point is now growing, mm -hmm. as you know. And if we want to have more conferences, that type of thing that, that we've been looking for to, to, to promote the Expo Center and the, and the area, then we're going to have to have an additional rooms to, to be able to do that. Accommodate all of those, those people coming in. And we welcome all of those people with open arms, don't we? Absolutely. So that's why it's so important to have the hotels downtown, like you said, with the events going on in the Expo Center. And, you know, Donovan and I have discussed with Steve St. John, the number of events that go on there people don't realize, but they also need places to stay right downtown, not in the outlying areas of the city limits. Well, it's, it's, it's about the stay night, but it's also about the quality. Because mm -hmm. if you're recruiting, you know, for example, the Kentucky League of Cities has been wanting to come to this area for a while. And right. the one area that they need improvements on with the hotel is the weekend traffic. So we're pursuing different tourism events and, and things that we can promote the area for weekends to help the hotel night for full occupancy through the rest of the week. Uh, but of course the business traveler, which again creates our economy around here. And then, you know, Don, as, as he can tell you, I mean, our relationship, I won't say hasn't been self-fulfilling. It has in a sense. I mean, the commission will know this. I mean, it has been because there's a lot of benefits that 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 we've had. And that's why we've done a few things, Don, is through partnership as, as, Absolutely. as he can explain better than I can. 
that this project wouldn't take place and the existing project wouldn't have taken place if it had not been between the cooperation and the efforts between uh, Don's company and, right. and the owner and, and the city commission. Well, if you look at the tight sites that we worked with uh, and the location, I mean, it actually started going, it started with utilities, you know, having uh, adequate utilities to service the site, and the city was helpful in that. Uh, we ran into that really with both hotels, and uh, the city helped us with that, particularly with sewer, more than as much as anything. Then you look at the fact that uh, uh, the alley, uh, we needed that space to, uh, to make this hotel work, and we were able to work out, we actually did a little uh, land trade. Right and gave the city some access to back to that alley and traded there. And so these guys helped us with that, which was a big help. Uh, as I mentioned here a few minutes ago, parking. Yeah, uh, we don't have on-site parking, and that's probably, you know, any place, that's one of the biggest things that you need. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to work out uh, some parking arrangements with the city and, uh, and lease some space from the city uh, in the parking garage. So, you know, those kind of things are the kind of things that, uh, you know, make a good partnership because uh, the, the city needed this to happen. We wanted to make it happen, but it just took a little give and take on both sides, and we were able to get that. Well, I think when everybody has the one common goal, and Jimmy and, uh, and I have talked about this, Donovan, you and I have talked about it extensively, is that when you have one big picture in place, you find ways to make things happen. Like you said, where there's a will, there's a way. Mm -hmm. You put a, you know, a great multi-bed facility in a very small location, but that is, is the vision that we have here. And we all want to work together for the, the greater vision that we have, and it's just a remarkable effort. Well, and the, and the benefit, I mean, not only does it serve, as, as uh, Commissioner Carter said, the university and the Expo Center and all the businesses mm -hmm. downtown, the hospital and all of our growth, but from a tax base, there, there's really right. no other business, candidly speaking, that generates the, the tax base the other than, I mean, in numbers, if you look at it, percentage of square footage compared to what we're getting. Because we get from the hotel, as Don mentioned, we get restaurant, we're going to get new restaurants, so we'll have restaurant tax, mm -hmm. we'll have property tax, we have bed tax, we have uh, um, uh, an occupational tax. And these are taxes that aren't being paid by the general, the local people. These aren't people that are coming here that are, you know, somebody from Cedar Creek or Cloy doesn't come and stay in the hotel. It's people from outside the region. So that brings that tax base in and it helps us with additional services that we're able to provide to the local people. So as I said, it is somewhat self-serving mm -hmm. along with to support the other infrastructure. And Donna, one thing you mentioned, because I'm really excited about this, I mean, we obviously our feasibility study also talked about the need for additional restaurants, and you mentioned a restaurant being in the hotel. What type of, I'm just curious, what type of restaurant are we talking about? You know, it's going to be a, uh, an American grill is basically what it is. So uh, we'll do breakfast every morning. It's cooked to order. And then we'll be open for lunch, and that's primarily going to be uh, soup, sandwiches, uh, you know, burgers. Um, we do have a couple of steaks on the menu, but that's probably a little bit more for nighttime. Uh, steaks, salads. Um, and then, of course, we have a full service bar as well. Uh, and, and open to the public, though. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. That's what I was getting ready to say. The people who are living downtown, it's all within walking distance yes. of many, many attractions that we have. And that's, that's one of the things that we wanted to make sure was, was accessible, is that you can walk to so many right. different places. That's a good point area. because the other part of this is, is, is too, is we've got so many new restaurants in the downtown area that all the folks that are staying, the two, 400 rooms that are staying there aren't all going to eat at right. the hotel. They can't. Right. They're, <laughs> they're eating at other areas right. as well. So it's bringing more people right. downtown. It's creating more opportunities all the way around. So I mean, it really is, it's a win-win situation. I and mean, we'll certainly really generate more, probably small businesses to pop up in the downtown area. It's a gorgeous facility. I mean, if you look at it again on camera and you see how it's laid out, it's, a, it's the Hilton flag name with the, beside the hand. I mean, we're really blessed. We, really we blessed. certainly are. Our, our little city is growing. It yeah. certainly is. Okay, so I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh -oh. As I do every time that we have a guest, this, okay. is, what, this is my job, okay? <laughs> Okay. When <laughs> will this magnificent new facility be open? Oh, she is going to put me on the spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what I do. And she, and she marks it down. If you're not right, she comes and she comes back. <laughs> okay. Um, August 15th. August 15th? Of 2013. Really? Mm -hmm. That's not too far. It's no, it'll be far. here before you know it. It will be. And, uh, you, you know, this is the business that they're in. Jill, you look around, you see these uh, major construction companies. They come in. I won't say these are cookie-cut approaches, but they have a great design. They know what they're doing. If you've already seen the last couple of months, 
a couple of floors have gone up, the studs yeah. have gone up, the steel. So I mean, a lot it's, of great it's things. It's daily are happening. progress that you see. Amen. Amen. Daily progress. Well, Don, we certainly thank you so much for being with us and giving us an update on our brand new Hilton Garden facility. And we look forward to August to it opening up. You come back and talk to us before so we can know all the great things that are already in place and get started, okay? Well, we're looking forward to it, right. and I'll see you in August. <laughs>
to um, handle the patrons that visit the area in case they need to use the restrooms. It will also have a wash down station inside the facility. There's also a separate facility that's being built and this facility will include a attack and feed room and an office for someone to attend to the patrons needs as they come and visit the park and also to maintain the shelf, the, uh, the park itself. Well, and Jill, we talked earlier, you know, ADA compliance is not only important mm -hmm. because we're required to do so, right. but also goes along with the theme of, of Bob Amos Park. Uh, not just the bathrooms, but also there's a component in this, as Jody will show you here in just a mm -hmm. moment, I'm sure, that's got a, a ramp on it for, again, to allow somebody that has a, uh, uh, that needs handicap accessibility right. Uh, to be able to cater to that. And obviously with the uh, Special Needs Park, the Randy Jones uh, Memorial Park there, at the every Christmas in July, again, it kind of plays to the theme of which, again, the commission uh, wanted to make sure that we we cover that Absolutely. component of it. That's yes. the thing, that everybody, regardless yes. of what your capacity is, can utilize the park in some way. Right. And Absolutely. I think being able to utilize the equestrian park is just, um, it's just one other way that we're encouraging everyone to get out and do things together and not be restricted in any way. Uh, you know, Jill, the we throw out a lot of stats sometimes and we talk about money and everything, but it's about people too. How important is it for a child with a disability to be able to go with a child that doesn't have a disability and ride a horse or go play on a, a play set together? Yeah. And you know, that child not be restricted in any way, uh, just like their child, just like their friend is. And uh, you know, uh, that was so important to us. And uh, you know, I know that we've all discussed it and it was, it was very important that this be a part of this. And, and it is a part of this. Yes. Like Donovan said, we do have a, a ramp for uh, that's ADA compliant mm -hmm. that uh, users can come to the site and get assistance to mounting the horse. And there's also a special ring. It's a 30, approximately 30 foot diameter ring that's fenced in area that patrons will be able to ride the horse around in the circle and enjoy the day oh, on wow. horseback. Yeah while so an attendant is leading the horse and make sure they're off safe. We have some visuals on some of this? Yes, show? we do. Why don't you go through your PowerPoint and show some okay. of the folks, because I know that we can sit here and gab about it all day long, but what it's all about is people want to see Gotta what's be going able to on. See it. All righty. Um, as I discussed earlier, the, the phase one of the construction is 2.5 miles of horse trails. There are picnic areas and trail signage. So we're looking at the actual area for the horse trail. So yes, we what, are. What does the lines represent? The, the blue line represents the loop trail, okay. and the red line represents the spur trail that comes off the loop trail. And as you can see, we have, we've identified several areas of possible picnic areas in the, uh, the location, and the green is the park boundary where the, the horse stable will be located. Where, now, where is this at, Joe? This Just is, for the viewers. This is uh, right above the water tank on your way to the overlook uh, on Bob Amos. Across the street from the Smoky Blanket Show. What most people know is exactly. the Smoky Blanket Show. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's, okay. that's correct. Okay, great. <clears throat> now you said along that way, along you can also see on there you have the the stable where it's going to be located, the mm -hmm. tech and feed room, uh, the restrooms, the ramp, and the parking mm -hmm. area too. Because we'll, you know, if people bring their horses there, we'll have to have some kind of parking for their trailers and Absolutely. things of that nature. Exactly. And the equestrian uh, site plan shows that layout, mm -hmm. and it shows exactly where the proposed stable is going to be, the tack and feed room, as you mentioned, and the parking lot area. The parking lot area that is existing up there now, it will be expanded um, and resurfaced to uh, make room for larger vehicles and handicapped vehicles, make accessibility easier for those folks. And also, you can see the riding ring and the uh, handicap ramp that will enable um, the patrons to be easily mounted on the horse as they're taking part in the, the riding of the area in the ring. That's great. Now the next area you have here, this is the barn? Yes, this, this is the barn. Built. This is a 20 stable barn. It has one rot washroom it, and the wash the wash down room is for the horses, the ADA compliant bathroom. And as I mentioned earlier, the existing parking lot will be expanded. Mm -hmm. Wow. There's also a tack and feed house that adjoins that. And the upper um, portion of the tack and feed house will be used to store feed. The bottom of that will contain an office, as I mentioned earlier, and, and the tack room. And the upstairs of the barn will also used to be store, uh, will be used to store hay to feed the horses. So okay. this is kind of a rendition of what we're going to actually be seeing exactly. there. One question I have for you, the mm -hmm. 20 stalls, are those going to be horses that are 
a company or I guess house by horses that people own already or are they are there going to be horses that the city is going to provide to that a little bit of both trail okay right. the, the, the we're uh, looking at an expanded at some point Jill the, the commission is talking about doing some rental or a program with maybe an independent out okay. there uh, however the real true intent is is actually allow ho housing mm -hmm. um, Somebody again that wants to ride the trail, they can come in. To your point earlier, somebody likes to, you know, if they want to sp spend the night, we're looking at another phase of putting campsites out. Mm -hmm. um, so this will be multi use initially, and then hopefully primarily for rental and for uh, okay. storing. So that, as I think this is like every other program the commission has yeah. done, it's kind of expanded well, as was, we go forward. I was getting ready to say, you know, whenever you start a program, and you really learn more about it as you go along, and you're Absolutely. able to tweak it and and get the most value out of it, then well, this will be that way. With the rental aspect, that might provide people with another opportunity if they don't have a place to house a horse. Right. They can do that there. Well, you know, if somebody didn't have a horse, or if somebody had a horse, <laughs> and they wanted a place to house it, and um, most of the time they want somebody to ride it too, so that might be something that somebody would want to look at. Very good. Okay, keep going, Jody, you're doing well. All right, uh, the next I have the, the floor plan, which shows you an overall view of what, exactly what's going to take place up there, the construction of the two buildings that I discussed earlier. Um, to the right, the bottom right of the screen, you can see the, the office area and the tack and feed room that's a little smaller building off to itself. And the larger building there it sh depicts the, the horse stalls and how they be oriented. And you have a, a walkway down the middle of the, the barn. That way you can lead your horses out. Um, either to take to the ADA ramp or to access the, the trail ride. Right. Uh, the next view here is an elevation view. It shows you what the anticipated uh, barn will look like um, from the side view and also from the end view of, of the existing, uh, of the proposed structure, I should say. And now we have the ADA horse riding ring that we mentioned earlier. Um, the horse ring is 30 feet in diameter. Enclosure allows a safe ride for handicapped slash disabled patrons. The ADA mounting ramp is to aid the handicapped riders uh, in mounting and dismounting the horse um, as they enter and leave the facilities. Well, it's a, you know, and again, there's a, a lot of importance upon this because it kind of ties into what the theme of it is. But if you look overall, Jill, the uh, this this whole project, there's a lot of components to this. If you mm -hmm. see the, the uh, what was the mileage on the trail, Jody? Two and a half miles. Two, so the initial phase of the two and a half mile trail is actually kind of linking into our already walking trail. They're, they're not right. going to be side by side, but they're going to kind of intercross inter inter at, at a particular junction. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, understand this is a $320,000 project, so you're getting all this for only 320000 which, by the way, I thank Melanie Stevens and, again, the Commission Barry, because mm -hmm. we went after uh, this is an initiative that the First Lady of Kentucky is, is is uh, yes. very favorable of. Um, so we were awarded this grant based upon her initiatives and our presentation in the submittal tied into the park and, and again linking it back to the Randy Jones Memorial Special Needs Park. Yeah. So it's just one more jewel of Bob Angus Park. Well the one question Jody, that I always ask of guests when they come here and we talk about these wonderful projects that are happening and I, I do it to everybody so don't be offended. <laughs> Once we get everything in place, how long do we think it's going to take um, from start to finish before we can start seeing some activity on that trail. You're talking about construction phase? Construction from okay. from now until the time it's completed. I'm anticipating construction will probably take four to six months to okay. complete the, the structure, mm -hmm. the permitting process that needs to be done to get the necessary approvals to do to construct that structure. Mm -hmm. So what are we looking at putting it up for bid again? Approximately two weeks. Okay, so by spring of this year, yeah. We're going to be up there riding, Jill. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I was going to say. So by spring, when we get a little bit of warmth, oh, because boy. it's turned a little bit cold this week, uh, we will be able to see people up there riding horseback and enjoying just another great opportunity that the city of Pikeville has to offer. Well, and as Jody smiles, is because, once again, the, the commission likes to kind of push a little bit. But yeah. He and I are both on that end. Uh, every I know, every now and then, they're trying too. to get a project through. Uh, trying to get a project. But, uh, we're, I mean, I, I just know that there are so many people, once we mention this show, that are so excited about the opportunity to have this within our city limits. There are so many horse lovers throughout our area that will really take advantage of this and I can't wait to see families up there spending quality time together and really utilizing just another phase of the Bob Amos Park. Well I, I know somebody personally that's in, in close proximity to us who happens yeah. to live over on Island Creek who owns some horses. You can't see her, she's off of uh, mm -hmm. off the set right now, but she was really excited. And again, yeah. there's a lot of enthusiasts in the area, Jill. A lot there of really are. So it's a great, great, it'll be a great product. And instead of going to other places to ride their horses, they can stay here at home and uh, ride within, a, within the city limits, but 
feel like you're out somewhere else? Well, between the Half and McCoy uh, River Trail, the Blue Water Trail, you've got, again, the uh, soccer complex, the, uh, the RV park, all those amenities all in our community. You know, Jill, I had the uh, mayor of, of um, Grundy up here uh, just a couple of mm -hmm. weeks ago. They had no idea Bob Amos was up there, and they yeah. were talking about being envious. I mean, oh, they were I'm really, sure. really envious. I'm so sure. we're, very, we're very, very blessed. Just one more great opportunity the city of Pikeville and the commission has afforded us to have. Welcome in City Commissioner Jimmy Carter and special, special guest to us today, Neil Wilson from South Carolina. We're going to be talking about a lot of fun and exciting things coming. Actually, we've talked about him for a long time and now he's actually here live and in person. Well, his ears, he's told me, has been burning for the past, uh, <laughs> for the past year, especially because you and I welcome. have. Well, have thank been. you for the invite. Appreciate you uh, having time to, to bring us up and and look forward to working with the City of Pikeville on this project. Well, we're very excited for you to be here. Donovan, I'm going to let you <coughs> tell everybody who Neil is, and then we'll go from there. Well, uh, Neil Wilson is a, uh, is a has become a good friend, and uh, over the last year and, and a half, almost two years now, Neil, uh, I had the opportunity of uh, being introduced to Neil, as I've told on you, uh, Jill, on previous programs. Um, when we looked at this piece of property from the City's Commission uh, perspective, Jimmy, uh, the commission wanted to, under, to, to know how it would give the best bang for its buck back to the community because obviously this is a, uh, a tremendous uh, and, and valuable piece of property because of the location. Um, over the past couple of years, and I'm getting to Neil's introduction here in just a second, Jill, <laughs> but let me lay the foundation, is over the past couple of years the city commission uh, has worked diligently on making this an attractive piece of property. Obviously when you look at Walmart and you look at this type of sales that they do and, and the rankings in the state, they've been ranked as high as third in the state in volume coming from the retail side of the business and understanding what Lowe's uh, does in our community. And we've had a lot of different stores that have come in and have done openings. And, and the vision from the commission, Jimmy, and I might want to speak on your all's behalf, but, but, but I know what the message has been loud and clear to my marching orders the past couple of years, is that this commission was tired of the city having to go outside of the market, to travel to Lexington and Charleston and Kingsport and all these other places, taking our tax dollars and out of the market or taking the, uh, uh, the demand for jobs because one job creates service demands for other positions. Uh, and in doing that, uh, we marketed the property different ways. First of all, they, they uh, proceed with a $5.5 million uh, road widening project. Uh, past that, they did a tree removal project. They Five hundred thousand dollars. I think it's five hundred sixty thousand dollar water line uh, install in order to make uh, to be able to make this uh, property developable, and then a three hundred fifty thousand dollar sewer line extension. Again, upsizing the pipe so that again a development could come into play. And on top of that, uh, the commission worked diligently a couple of years ago recruiting Texas Roadhouse into the market, and now uh, the success story that they've had uh, uh, has been phenomenal. Uh, but because of the, not only those components, but also if you look at US 23 and the, and the 38,000 cars a day that goes through that intersection there, uh, this becomes a very attractive piece of property. And with that said, again, m my background as a, as a district manager for Lowe's, I was involved in, in doing, uh, on the other end, and you know, Jimmy worked in this capacity as a store manager for Lowe's and, and, and for Ferro Gas now, um, in looking at places where we can go in and recruit business and locate business to where it makes sense. And this is where this piece of property became so valuable and, and such a targeted piece. So uh, I, I pursued a couple different companies and asking them to come in and look at our at our uh, facility. And one I won't, I can't, as I've told you time and time again, and Neil I'm sure is going to give you the same story, that we can't disclose the names of a lot of these retailers right. that we're talking about. But this particular relationship, uh, I went to um, actually Lexington and met at the airport with uh, this gentleman. And, and uh, in sitting down, uh, we were, I had the, the plans laid out and said, you know, we've got this great piece of property and we want to develop it for, uh, for retail. We want to create uh, service demands, top of the mind awareness, all the things that drives people to Pineville. And uh, he, he started going through, he thought it was a great market and a good community, but he said, uh, you know, I've got this great developer. He's our, one of our number one developers and he's got a great personality and the man works hard and he said, I'd, I'd like to introduce you to him. So the first phone call was made and uh, I got to speak to, to Mr. Wilson here. Uh, invited uh, Neil to the to the market. He was oh too eager to come. Uh, came in and and uh, the rest is history. We've created a relationship, a hard working relationship. Uh, Neil, I've told the story several times with Jill that a big piece of, or, uh, of this puzzle was also trying to get the post office 
part uh, done. Absolutely. And uh, when we pulled up, uh, Neil said, you know, we're able to make this development look like you're getting ready to see on, on camera here in a few minutes. Uh, we need to have this one component in this piece. So uh, he and I made a trip to North Carolina and met with uh, uh, some of the post office folks. And uh, Neil said this is, I remember his, his comments that day, so this is going to be a struggle trying to get us to the point where, right. where we get. And I don't think it can be done, but I'm going to task you to try to get her done. And if you can, uh, you know, it'll, it'll make a really good project. And, and, and Neil and I can tell you uh, with over 100 email, hundreds of emails back and forth and several meetings and conference calls, uh, we've been very successful, and we now have a signed contract, and everything is moving forward. Mm -hmm. So uh, Neil is a principal owner and, and uh, does a great job with uh, Realty Link. Um, you know, again, you can go to their website, you can see what they're all about, and, and uh, Neil uh, comes with a, a great background. So with that said, I'm, I'm honored that we've got uh, Neil, you as as a partner now. Uh, obviously, our our small piece of this is to give you a piece of property. Uh, you're the one making the investment <laughs> and, and, and taking all the risk, but we're very blessed to have somebody such as Neil. And uh, uh, with that said, I'll, I'll let Neil kind of tell a little bit about okay. himself, if that's okay with you. Well, Neil, we're very excited for you to be here. Sonovan said well, we you. have uh, been talking about you for at least a year that I know of since we've been doing this. And a lot of people are very excited around our, our beautiful city that we're going to have opportunities, like Donovan says, to be able to stay at home, spend our money at home. And thank you for choosing Pikeville and the piece of property that we have. So we're just really excited to get to know a little bit more about you. And, and I know that there are certain things that I can't ask, but that doesn't mean that I won't try. <laughs> That's part of my job. But uh, we're really excited. So let's talk a little bit about your background and, sure. and the types of centers that you create. We do have a mock-up in a little bit that we're going to look at okay. to uh, to show our viewers what we kind of what we can expect to see over there around that area. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful piece of property it's going to be. So talk a little bit about um, your involvement in developments of these type centers. Okay. Be glad to. Um, Donovan's right. We have become close friends from working together through a, a challenging project trying to get the post office under contract. Of course, the city owns projects uh, or property. So it's been, a, it's been a tug of war trying to get the post office to the finish line, but Donovan did a great job in a commission to, to get the post office property under contract. So at this point, I think we can move forward. Jill, my background is for the last 14 years has all been retail. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't disclose the tenants that we would have at this location, but I can tell you some of the tenants that we do work with on a daily basis. Okay. Um, Cole's Department Stores. Uh, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, uh, Joann's, um, Starbucks, um, Ulta, uh, Academy Sports. We just finished their store in Dalton, Georgia. I uh, finished the Coles in Dalton, Georgia. Um, let's see, probably about every TJ Matz is a, is a, we're probably working with TJ Matz in about five markets. Uh, certainly they would be a great addition to this market. Uh, DSW, which is 18,000 square feet of shoes. I'm very familiar with that. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Out of that 18,000, I think there's about 300 square feet for, for guys. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> the rest is for ladies. Uh, but those are some of the retailers. And then with restaurants, we work with about every brand you can think of. We've done uh, Olive Gardens. Uh, we've done every fast food brand, uh, wireless. We've done AT&T, Verizon. We all told about 350, 400 projects. And we're not scared to travel. I think that's one of the reasons that Pikeville hit our radar screen. It's, it's like Donovan said, a, a national retailer said, you need to come to Pikeville. And of course, I scratched my head and said, Pikeville, okay. Where is that? Where is that? <laughs> Pulled out a map and, and found it and came in and wanted to learn the market. So uh, my wife and myself came in and spent the weekend Mm -hmm. and Pikeville, got to, to understand the market a little better because if you just look at pure demographics, Pikeville's not metro, it's not the exactly. Atlanta, it's not the Charlotte uh, that most retailers understand. And then of course the property is situated behind Walmart, which is a little unusual. Right. It's got a river in front of it, <laughs> which is also a little unusual. Lots of different obstacles, <laughs> right? <laughs> And it's got a, a, a five-acre post office distribution center sitting in the middle of it. So 
it was a lot of challenges. And, um, well, like I said, we also have a fantastic website, real, realtylinkdev.com. That is correct. That uh, you can certainly go to. Donovan and I have discussed it before on previous shows to kind of get a, a better feel. And some of the names that you just mm -hmm. mentioned, they're on there so you can get a feel for what may or may not be coming, or at least the people that you have a, a relationship with. Jimmy, I want to ask you quickly from a city commissioner standpoint, you you know, have been on the commission for several years and have seen, as Donovan and I have mentioned before, Pikeville grow and develop beyond leaps and bounds that I think probably any of us could have imagined 10 years ago. And that's why we talk about it being such a, a special and exciting time. But talk a little bit about your feelings, how it's grown, and, and why you think it's so important to bring these type developments to our area. Well, Jill, as, as we've talked before, you know, I think people get have been getting tired of going away to shop. It's hard and, to travel. And it is hard to travel with gasoline prices the way they are. And, and just everybody's time these days just seems like it's shorter and shorter. So uh, with that property that we have uh, down on Thompson's Road, it just, it just, you know, it's been out there for a long time. And we haven't really had a whole lot of bites on it. And I have to say, I think Neil definitely has done his homework and he says, go to Pikeville. He was told to go to Pikeville. Well, <laughs> why would you go to Pikeville? especially in a down economic time, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. But I think after Neil came here and spent some time and, and see what happening, what's happening in this town and around the town and, the, and how regional we actually are, yeah, we're a small town of 7,000, but, you know, we pull in a, a lot more people than that. So, and, you know, just the whole aspect of the downtown area growing the way it is and, and just everything. I mean, it's just, uh, it just, I think, an opportunity for us now to jump on this and have Neil come in and, and do his magic. Well, it certainly is. And we're not talking about a very long time frame here either, right? As far as starting getting the development? Starting and getting I everything the, completed. I believe the, the post office contract was sold at a catalyst. Mm -hmm. We've gotten commitments from, I guess, probably five national retail uh, mm -hmm. tenants that probably occupy around 100,000 square feet. Right. The project as a whole, I didn't mention this, is about 220,000 square feet of retail. That's um, amazing. Kind of hard to get your mind around, isn't it? That's a lot. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty good size project. It is. Now, also within the, you mentioned national brands coming in, but within the development, there are going to be places for local retailers, too. Absolutely. We didn't want to exclude them at all. No. And I know that you've already gotten some semi-commitments from some of those people that are going to be moving their businesses, which is a great thing. We do have a, um, a mock-up of what it's going to look like. If We'll take a, a full screen of that in just a moment uh, to talk a little bit about what it's going to look like. It's going to center around Texas Roadhouse. I got to see some of that just a little bit earlier. Yeah, it was, um, I guess, a, 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 an effort trying to get a site plan that would work. Mm -hmm. uh, Lifestyle-type centers are very popular, but retailers traditionally like more of the power center uh, kind of line up. So we had to sort of work around the Texas Roadhouse and it sort of blossomed into almost like a horseshoe right. shaped lifestyle center uh, around the Texas uh, Roadhouse. So it fronts both sides. Uh, it's got a great view corridor from the river. Uh, we're hoping to uh, ha gain access through the Walmart Center as well. We've got a good relationship with Walmart. We're not a Walmart developer, but right. They know us and we know them and they've been good to work with over the years. And how that's going to happen is there's a little, um, Donovan help me, I don't know if we want to call it a, it's not a, a waterway, but there's a big dip there between this property and the back of Walmart. Yeah, so there, there, there is a drain line uh, ditch down there and Neil's looked at, uh, Neil's had his eyes obviously when he's mm -hmm. kind of make this kind of uh, investment in our community and you know, and that's what the folks need to understand. This is over a $30 million, yeah. I won't say risk on his behalf because as he said, he's doing his work and, and uh, he's got the retailers, the national brands and those that he's going to be able to pull in, but it, it still is. I mean, he's got to make the footprint work, he's got to make the traffic flow work. I know that was uh, in, in early on when we were dealing with Neil, Neil well, can tell you it, uh, uh, looking at the traffic flow, it was a big concern. Uh, and, 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 and I know, I guess you've got, let me, let me say this, you have a site map there. Let's, I do. Why don't you let Neil sit there, Jill, and kind of go okay. through uh, what his plans are. We can kind of put up on the board the site map along with uh, this design, because this right. design, Jill, I just got this, Neil emailed it to me Friday, I think. Yes. Uh, it was Friday that I got it. I was absolutely blown away. We've been talking about this design and uh, Jimmy and the commission, you know, we were, we, we had, <clears throat> the, the commission had done a, um, a, a housing study a couple of years ago whenever we were trying to get, recruit the second hotel in for the uh, Hilton Gardens. And Neil had called me, we were talking about uh, trying to make this project work and had asked me if there was a need for housing. 
And I said, just so happens. <laughs> well, that's I, have I was report. just looking on here um, where it says, is this residential above? It is. Is that what it means? Okay. I don't know how this is going to translate. We do have a mock up of the other, so we'll yeah. go ahead and put that up as we talk through this. But the great thing about it is, I see, is that you travel along US 23 looking over at Texas Roadhouse now. All of the stores are going to have a visible storefront, there won't be any backs. Correct. Right. So you'll see, like on the end here, it says uh, a very large. Can I say that? What that is? Yes. A craft store of sorts. Okay. Large, I'm asking large craft store. a large <laughs> 55,000 square foot craft store. I'm, I'm asking permission every time because this is a really exciting thing for me. As Donovan knows, I have I have absolutely pestered the life out of him, trying to get some information. But you do have an apparel, a 20,000 square foot apparel store. All of this in a horse show so formation. So I'm going to let you talk about some different sure. things here. And when I say we had a, about 100,000 committed, we probably will end up with about another 40 or 50,000 square feet committed mm -hmm. once once you start bringing them into right. into the picture. Um, but yes, we got a craft store. We've got two uh, soft goods apparel stores, mm -hmm. uh, both national brands. Uh, we have a 10,000 square foot shoe store. Uh, we'll probably end up with a 10,000 square foot beauty, cosmetic, salon okay. type store. Um, and then of course we have um, a pet store and another dress shop of 5,000 square feet. And then I think we have around 20,000 square feet of shop space that would be more of your local merchants. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, we all need, I, we've asked, Donovan and I, I will say, has, have talked quite a bit about the need for, for retail space for our local people who have local businesses, you know, your small gift shops, things like that, that really need a lot more space than what they're in now. So this provides an excellent opportunity for them to move where they are into a larger space and get the foot traffic from the other stores too, which is also very important. Um, talk a little bit about the residential um, okay. units that will be placed above. I've been to... Um, First thing that comes to mind, of course, we're calling this the Pikeville Commons, is Myrtle Beach Commons area, and they have a whole center of stores there with residential places above. It, I'm s assuming it's going to be something similar. It is. It has 58 residential units, mm -hmm. which is one, two, and three bedroom units. Um, it's a you know this would be called a mixed use mm -hmm. project, meaning retail and residential. Um, people can shop and also live here, or they can rent. Uh, okay. or lease. Uh, but it's two floors of residential above the retail. Uh, the residential units will have its off-site uh, parking. Okay. Be behind the center will be so like a carport or a garage mm -hmm. where they can park. Uh, they'll have elevators in the front that will service their guests or, or uh, friends, family, so right. forth that can park along with the retail customers and just go into like a lobby type area and hit area and then hit the elevator and, and, and go up. So. That's so exciting. Well, I saw you beaming over there when he was talking about <laughs> shoes and clothing. Oh, because there, I'm, yeah. looking, I'm looking at the spaces that are here, you see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's true though, and I think that anybody who hears uh, previously when you mentioned names and certain type stores that could be here. I know what I go out of town for and what right. so many families travel out of town for. It's exciting to me that we're going to be able to stay home and have the opportunity here, aside from the fact that we're going to have everybody else coming to our location that may not want to travel to your bigger right. cities. Well, and, and you know, with that said, I'm going to go back to a comment we made earlier about, you know, not only driving the, the, um, the creating uh, a, a service demand area or a point of destination, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of other components that's going in this, and I think Neil and his team has done an absolutely phenomenal job uh, because, again, when you go back and you look at what the commission's vision was and what they wanted to see on that property, it's doing all those things. We've mm -hmm. created g great dining. We've created the opportunity of, of as Neil said, uh, that he's already, and the key word is there, you heard, he's already signed. Right. Uh, that's the exciting that, thing. That, that, that's the, because that's, you know, when we go, when I look back a couple of months ago and I kept saying, Neil, when we get in there, when we get in there, mm -hmm. it's, well, let's get through the post office mm -hmm. piece and I have letter of intents, but now he's talking that he also has signed. So, um, but when you look at the full scope of this project, it's not just about the retail, it's about the quality of life. Again, it's when, and, and Neil's educated me on this because I came from a different type of retail. And this is more in Neil's uh, in his expertise, but when uh, you know, to your point, when a woman goes out and they want to do their shopping, they're not wanting to go to an area where there's only one store that sells dresses. Right. They want a selection of two or three. And they want to be able to go get their shoes. Uh, they want to have something to eat along their journey. So, you know, this design is is outstanding. But it also creates a quality of life issue for people that can move into the area, and that. Um, 
<clears throat> that you know you can live somewhere where you can eat, you can shop, you can you can, you can uh, Neil uh, and Neil was so gracious uh, because uh, again it's one of those eye brow rousing moments when I say Neil this is also what we want to do and I hear the well but he made a way to make it work and work with this commission and that's the boat ramp on the on the on the bottom um, you know that the city's invested several hundred thousand dollars in creating this river trail program we've uh, been received several uh, uh, awards and and been named the Blue Water Trail. Uh, so Neil found a way, again, with the way the residents flow, uh, to make that work for us as well so that we're not intruding upon the actual retail development aspect of it. So this has got a lot of layers into it, but, uh, but as you're looking at the, uh, and Neil, I want to refer a little bit to the uh, board itself, but if you look at the design that we're now looking at, what are, again, you're talking about two levels of apartments, and I assume that's the two levels on top. And then, so these, uh, the, you've got a couple different phases, I assume, uh, that you're looking at, phase We're, one, two, and this is the first phase? It's almost now going to occur in one phase. Uh, the, uh, if there's, there's not going to be a lot of residual land. When we landed the 55,000 square foot uh, tenant, you know, that was a big jumping off point to, to try to kick it all into one phase. So, um, you, but we will start, of course, locating the, 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 the new post office right. and, and tearing down the existing post office. So one, the post office property will trail behind, right. but I don't think it will be like two phases. I think it would just be a construction delay until we can get the post office built in. So if we were, if we were putting a shovel in the ground today, we would start at the post office, get that project up and running, and then continue down towards the river or wrap it around Texas Roadhouse and then as soon as we can demo the post office starting on that side. So I think it'll be a, a continuous uh, construction project for probably about eight months. Well, that's encouraging. Eight, eight months. months. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another time I've worked up, eight months. Now let me ask I mean, you. They, they will open, excuse me, but they will open before the, some of them will open before the eight right. months. Right, as you the, continue. The, 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 as, it, as it trails off into the other project, it's about an eight month delivery. Well, if, uh, and Jill, not to jump ahead, but if all goes well, and, and I know we're under a 150-day due diligence process with the post office themselves in order for them to, and I know there's some other timelines in there, but when would you expect that uh, if, if the post office gets to their 150, how soon thereafter, once the closing, would you be prepared to start? Well, we're working through the lease with the post office now, right. so Correct. once again, dealing with the federal government, so hopefully we can get through that lease pretty quick and, and get there, get that part buttoned up, but I would say sometime in spring. That's sometime in the spring, well, that's what eight I'll months from then. Yeah. <laughs> Mark it down, Jim. I'm yeah. going, don't you worry, I will. It'll Hope be a big day. That. Let me ask you quickly, um, I know we have different type stores that are listed here on the map that we have, and we have Texas Roadhouse Center there. Are there going to be other types of restaurants that are going to be w located within this area, or is that something we're going to not think about? Um, I think there's a real possibility that you could land another, you know, set down casual restaurant mm -hmm. like Texas Roadhouse. Okay. We do have a uh, signed letter of intent with a 6,000 square foot Chinese um, hibachi mm -hmm. style restaurant. Okay. So that I know we'll have at least one more uh, restaurant coming to the market. Okay. I was just I was just looking through the different areas that we have. We do have a 7,500 square foot pet store, which I know a lot of our pet lovers will be very excited about. Then the, the, the apparel stores, um, some other lo uh, local retailers that have already committed. But it's a it's an exciting map to look at. My my most exciting point will be when I can start filling in what they are, <laughs> as I'm sure many people have. And you know, Donovan, that's part of my job right. is to, to ask and see. But we are really excited to have you here today. Well, thank thank you, you so much for coming in. Um, I know, Donovan, this is something that we've worked hard for, Jimmy, as a city commissioner. I know you all have molded about for months and months and months, months. So it's exciting that we are getting to the point that we're going to start. When he says spring, I need to remind you that spring is just a few months away. It, well, it, it, it won't be as long as it has been. That's I right. can assure you of that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure Neil is very uh, happy to get that point. And, you know, I know that uh, Neil and the commission have had a great working relationship. Neil's come before the commission on a couple of occasions. Mm -hmm. uh, he came and actually, uh, the first rendition that he brought, this one's a little bit different because of the apartment uh, component that was right. uh, layered in. Uh, so I mean, it, it's been a uh, it's it's been a great project, a good relationship, Jimmy, and and uh, I know that we're excited. And if you look at, if you go on their website, Neil, you can kind of see all these little components we've got up on the screen also, because there's two different facets of this. When you look at this map here and you see all everything in black, and you kind of see the layouts of of the different type of stores, mm -hmm. but then when you look at the the mock up 
uh, in, in color and you see actually what he's bringing to the market, it takes on a whole different light. It is a whole different, and it's an absolutely beautiful complex. Looking at the, the semi-colored version right. of it, it's going to be a beautiful um, addition to our already beautiful city and we're just very excited about it. I'll give your website one more time if you don't care. I hope I don't we don't know. completely overload the system, <laughs> but it's RealtyLinkDEV.com. We'll try to put that up on the screen for you too. Um, so you can go there, read a little bit more about Neil Wilson and the projects that he's had in the past and some of the developers and companies that he works with so we can get a, a general idea. And I look forward to the day when we can start releasing those names and I know everybody else is excited about what the Pikeville Commons is going to bring. Welcome back into this special edition of the City of Pipeville Economic Development Report. Donovan, we have talked to so many people about the great opportunities and things that are going on within our community. We've had um, Malcolm Holtzman with Jenny Wiley Theater, the, the person who is creating the entire new building in the theater that we're going to enjoy. Neil Wilson, Thompson Road Development, uh, been much talked about over a the A lot of discussion. Jody Hunt with a horse trail. Um, we've had commissioners Jimmy Carter, Barry Cheney with us, and then Don Howard with the new uh, Hilton Garden Inn that's going to be downtown. I was going down the list thinking, my goodness, all of the construction, all of the development, all of the wonderful things that are happening within our community. And it seems as though it's going very quickly. Well, it is, and we, we don't want to forget we had a great uh, presentation today on the uh, Scholar House mm -hmm. project also. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's a, a, we'll show a slide up on it. You know, it um, the, I mean, this is a magnificent facility it too, is. Jill. And and it is, much needed. Well, it, greatly needed. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, we're very blessed to have a facility such as this. And there's a couple of different pictures and renditions of what we're looking at uh, building. This construction on this project will start uh, in November, I'm sorry, December. Uh, the gro official groundbreaking was this morning. Uh, Judge Rutherford and myself both serve on that uh, committee or that board, mm -hmm. and uh, he and I have decided to come on the show together and uh, show a united front because it's such a worthwhile project and to talk about all the ins and outs of the project at a future date. But we did want to show, and, you know, to your point, uh, what this building is going to look like, and of course this is servicing, as we've discussed before, servicing uh, kids in need, kids that are single parents that uh, need housing to continue their education. It's an investment in our future, as I mentioned today during the program. Um, because these kids, uh, you know, they, they need a, they don't, they don't want a handout, they want a leg up. They want, right. they want a way to, to the come in and, and, and get a, an education and, and be able to become a very productive member of our society. So it's a great, it's a great project and I'm looking forward to talking about, to, to Judge, uh, coming back on the show with Judge Ruthford and talking about our United Front mm -hmm. and what this project means to the community. And we'll do that very soon. Now let's recap some of the things that we've oh, talked yeah. about in this particular program. If we could do that quickly, I don't know if that's even possible. Well, um, it is. It, it's hard. <laughs> let's talk about completed projects that we've talked about a long time. Um, the U Pike Coal Building. Well, when you look at this, the downtown, if you look, it was Within the corporate boundaries, Jill, we've got millions and millions of pro dollars worth of projects going on, creating a lot of jobs, a lot of opportunity, but a lot of excitement, mm -hmm. and creating a tremendous quality of life issue for the citizens of Pineville. You know, again, I've been the city manager now for nine years. Within that nine years, I've seen the entire downtown completely change in right. landscape. And when you talk, again, about the completed projects, and I'm, we're only talking about projects that have been completed recently. Mm -hmm. If you go back the last several years, we could fill another two hours on, on a show. Absolutely. But if you look again, the, uh, the U Pike and all the different construction projects they've done, nothing has added more value, in my opinion, to the new U Pike uh, or the mm -hmm. new Cole Building, which is new medical school. It is a magnificent facility and glad to be part of our community now. State of the art facility. It is. And the city was proud to partner with the university and helping them get their mm -hmm. bond for this project because it's adding value. Uh, they've got their new class coming in, I think, in July of this year. So there's more people coming into our community, creating more demand. So it's a great project. The Food City on North Mayo Trail recently completed, and every time I go in there, it seems as though I find something new. Well, again, this is a great project that is expanding the retail development. Again, over the last, uh, I think I went back seven years. In the last seven years, we've had over 100 new businesses that have been constructed in the city. And again, the city commission has had a part in that, whether it's dealing with infrastructure, bringing them utilities, providing a road to them, uh, working out land agreements. I mean, there's been a lot of things that we've been involved in, but because of, again, our great community and all these different uh, different building projects, uh, you know, we, Food City was, was one of those that we benefited from. And not only, uh, and we'll talk about new projects here in a second, but uh, 
the South Mail Food City is undergoing what the North Mail Food mm -hmm. City built. And again, you're talking about a, a store that uh, employs over 220 employees uh, in each store, um, and they've got over 125 full-time workers with benefits. So these are major components to our, our economy. Mm -hmm. Other things that have recently been completed, the Lorraine Street Medical Center. Yep, which is a great complex. Again, the city owned that project, and and uh, if you've been down to Lorraine Street, you've seen what the good doctor built down there. It is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, great usage for that land. Oh, absolutely. Now, under construction, mm -hmm. I had somebody tell me yesterday that they have never seen so <laughs> much construction go on within such a small area ever, and the, the cranes, there are cranes everywhere. Yes. Well, I think you mentioned in your opening segment, talking. You know, we had the um, the Kentucky League of Cities, which represents over 380 cities out of 420 cities throughout the state. They were recently here. Mm -hmm. We did a little show for them, and the question by uh, the local uh, publisher was asked. Uh, Mr. Vanderbeck asked them if they were to to look across the state of cities that were economically developing, where mm -hmm. would they rank Pikeville? And both the executive director and the uh, director of governmental affairs both said we would rank the city of Pikeville as number one. I mean, that's a, that's, that speaks volumes. Huge compliment. I mean, it, it really was. I mean, we've been acknowledged in different publications, won several accolades or award. But when you, when you talk to somebody that this is what they do for a living is they go from city to city to city and look at economic opportunities and understand we've done this in a down a down com economy. Um, I mean, it's been a, it was a great blessing, a great comment, uh, but there is a lot of things going on in the city. Again, millions and millions of dollars in projects yeah. that we're just ver a very blessed community to be part of. Uh, we think about the uh, the Pikeville Medical Center, the Pikeville Library, the new one, the Judicial Center, Food City on South Mayo, as you mentioned. Yes. We had um, um, John Howard here with Hilton Garden, and then, of course, Malcolm with the Jenny Wiley Theater Project. All of these things are under construction right now. Yeah, these are things that are happening, and these are things that are creating construction jobs now, but will create quality of life and full-time jobs mm -hmm. later. So, again, the landscape continues to change. But now, I have a list. <laughs> that's where I was going. But that doesn't stop. I mean, it's, we are. if you look at down the road and see mm -hmm. what's coming, it, it's not slowing down. That's no, the great thing about it. it's not. Thompson Road de Retail Development. This has been such a hubbub about this. The Pikeville Commons. Going to bring in some big, big name shopping outlets for for our community and surrounding communities as well, bringing them in. Well, and, and of course we invited our local media into these uh, um, sessions because we wanted them to have the first opportunity Absolutely. to report. It's very important. We very, we very much support our local media. They do a great job in newspaper, radio, uh, and the medical leader. Uh, but my point is, is that they reported on this, and Jill, my phone honestly has not stopped ringing. I cannot imagine. Um, people wanting to know how they can rent an apartment to different businesses, asking how mm -hmm. they can come into as part of this development. Mm -hmm. But this is going to be a great development, and again, creating four to 600 new jobs with a lot of national brands that people would be very excited yeah, to hear. Things that we go out of town for are going to Absolutely. be here and bring other people into our community. Yep. We spoke briefly moments ago about the Scholar House, a new double quick gas station. Yes. The location of that, do we know? Yeah, it's actually the city on the property. We uh, worked about a year uh, to uh, down at the Combs Bridge uh, on the bypass okay. there. Uh, the city on the property to the left, it was tied into a piece of property that was owned by the state. Uh, we worked with the state and we acquired the property and turned around and did a property swap with where the old Happy Mart, people may know on South Mail Trailer was an old Happy Mart down there on South Mail. The city now owns that property and we traded that property for this property so that again we can add another component which is a new uh, C store or a convenience store. Yeah. So that's, we, a, that's in the planning stage. We have talked about in this program about the horse trail, a uh, Thompson Road Phase 2 design. This is, the, a lot of people are talking about Phase 2. Phase 2 will be the new bridge and the expansion of Thompson's Road, which was taken to a three-lane road, which will open up again additional property, because that's what we're finding, is that Mr. Wilson, looking at this development plan, he wants to get this one under his belt, but he's not, st he's not he's finished, not finished with finished Pikeville. Yet. He's looking at other opportunities as he well. He enjoyed himself while he was here, I believe. Very much so. Very we much. also have uh, the bypass, the Rockfall Project, which is a huge, huge project, and so very needed because of the, the danger of that area. Well, well again, Jill, I, I I appreciate the City Commission recognizing the danger there that is on the state highway, but we have worked with the state, and I want to give a special thanks to uh, Representative Leslie Combs, mm -hmm. uh, who, who went to Frankfurt this last go-around and worked very hard to get these 
dollars in the budget. But this five and a half million dollar project is in the budget. We're meeting with the transportation cabinet. The, the project should be designed by July, and we'll see some tremendous improvements to address that issue uh, here next year. Coming up, Foxcroft Sewer and the Peach Orchard Stormwater Project. Two again grants that we received, and uh, we, those projects are starting. Uh, the design for the Foxcroft is already done, uh, and actually both projects have been bid out and have been awarded. Uh, we were waiting on a couple permits through the Corps, and those both projects will start. And again, understand the sewer and water projects. You know, we have put 14 million dollars worth of projects, sewer and water projects, just in the last few years into place. 100% uh, of the city is watered. Uh, 90, I think it's 97, 98 percent of the city is sewered. There's only a few pockets of areas that have one or two houses that, uh, you know, it's difficult to go in because you could spend, actually, you could buy a new house for what it costs to put the, just a sewer system in right. those areas. But we are looking at, at ways to try to accommodate those areas as well. And of course, we've talked about so much. So much, But Jill. there are many other things that will be announced soon, yes. and we look forward to bringing those to light and uh, letting people know all about those great projects. We're excited. We'll keep on treading. Lots of economic development, City Manager. Absolutely, Jill. Look forward to coming back talking about more. We're going to do that. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>